Alright guys, so I'm going to teach you how to actually make a recipe and follow it through to a successful brew on Brewfather. Um, as previously mentioned, we love Brewfather for its ability to control every aspect of the brewing process. Uh, it's got cloud integration so you can access your recipes and follow through with them anywhere in the world. Um, it's constantly been updated and evolving to incorporate new features and new software such as the Wrapped that we're re really excited about. Um, it allows you to track the brews right through from the creation through to the brewing itself and gives you those timers and a chronology of your actual brew day. Um, it has uh, an excellent user interface as well that's just really easy and intuitive. So what we'll do, we'll get right into it and create a recipe. You can see here, this is my library of recipes that I've previously made. Um, you can reference them and categorize them into the recipes or any other thing you want to do. Um, but we're going to get started. You go to the top right here and create a new recipe. Um, so firstly, say I want to make a simple pale ale. We'll call it simple pale ale. Easy enough. Um, from that, you can also select your type of beer making. So you've got all grain, partial mash and extract. We're going to go with all grain today. Um, and our brewery of choice in this one will be the Brewzilla 35 litre, or previously known as Robo Brew. So fortunately, Brew Father have a um, a profile in here already, but if you're going to make your own, you just enter all the essential details, such as how long you're going to be boiling for, what your, your batch volume is, your output, um, some of the dead space below the mash screen, all that sort of stuff. Uh, you can punch it in there and just customize it to your own specific setup. But say we've got that in there for the 35 litre. You then want to figure out what style you're going with. So obviously American Pale Ale, um, it's a pretty popular one. Should be right at the top there. Select this style, boom. And it gives you there on the top right the specs that you're going to be wanting to constrain yourself to if you want to stick to the um, BJCP guidelines or AABC for you in Australia. With that, that will give us a rough guide of um, what we'll generally be aiming for if we've got nothing in mind already. To make a simple pale ale, I like to go with a nice base malt, uh, mainly 95% of the grist, and then build it up with 5% of something different, like a caramel or just something to add a bit of flavour, something specialty. So one of my favourites is Marisota. Um, we'll go with the... Muntins is a great Marisota malt. Um, just as I'm getting in this early stage, I'll put my amounts in as if they're percentages. So 95 kilos, uh, Not obviously not going to use that in the Robo Brew, but that'll be 95%. Um, and then we'll go, let's go Crystal, uh, Simpsons is a great one, what have they got from there? So Crystal T50, it's one of my favourites, one of the Fuller's uh, 50 uh, Lover Bond ones, really good stuff. So 5% would be 5 kilos, easy. Okay, so we've got our percentages in there now. Um, you want to obviously change your gravity because we're not going to be using 95. So you can set this button here to set your original gravity. So say a nice respectable starting gravity for a pale ale is 10.45. Excellent. And hit the scale button and it'll bring you down into that spec. So you can see here we're on the lower end of the original gravity. Or we'll just beef it up a little bit and go 10.55 just to keep it in the middle range of that. Easy enough to just scale it along. Excellent. So we've got our grain bill there. Um, next we want to deal with our hops. So a classic, we'll go Cascade here. So Cascade palettes, type it into the search bar, find it. You can also pull up any other ones you, you've got on hand or you want to use, Amarillo for instance. Um, but say we've got the Cascade in there, uh, you set your boil time, so 60 minutes, bittering. Let's go 20, 20 grams of hops. And then you enter in your specific alpha acid of the hops you have there, of course. Enter that. Great. So now we've got 20 grams at 60 minutes for 13 IBU cons... Uh, We'll add to that one. Um, so obviously we're still on the lower end of that. This is where we got a bit of flexibility to add in some different hops. So I want a really flavorful Cascade um, beer. I'm going to add a lot towards the end of the boil. So say in the last 10 minutes, um, I'm going to add, let's go crazy here and go 75 grams. Excellent. Cool, that's a nice little flavor. But we still have a fair bit of room to move. So I'm going to up that to 100 grams now. Great, that's bringing us more in line. Add, um, and you know what? Whirlpooling's pretty popular these days. Let's go some more Cascade. Ah, scratch that. We'll go some Citra for fun. And we're going to put it in the Whirlpool, which is a pretty common technique. So we go Aroma Hop Stand, and now instead of the time we're boiling, we're, we're putting in how long we're going to be uh, Whirlpooling it for. So I like to go for 20 minutes. That's a good round number. And I like to go a low temperature too, so we're not con uh, contributing too much bitterness. So let's say we go... 90 degrees. 
So 20 minutes for 90 degrees. Oops, sorry, need to enter amount. So I'm going to go another 100 because I'm crazy. Enter that. Perfect. Oh, wow, you can see that's added way too much bitterness. So we'll halve that because 50. Okay, we're still a bit too high. Um, let's go 25, halve it again. Okay, that's brought us much into line. So you can see here in the specs, we're all pretty much pretty right in the middle, a little bit to the higher end, but that's perfectly fine. Now, yeast, another crucial ingredient. I'm going to go with the classic um, American ale yeast, so USO5. Um, great, it's got Safal American. For a standard batch, I'm going to use one sachet. Great, you can put in your expiry dates too, generally, if you've got those and your manufacturing date, and it'll help you calculate viability as well. It's got a little bit of info there, but you can always add your own in as well. Okay, so that's brought our final gravity down to 1010. So that's a nice respectable 5.9% grav uh, alcohol by volume. So now you've got your essentials over, and then you can go to the finer minutiae of it. So you can set in your mash profile to uh, essentially control that final gravity you've got on the bottom there. So let's say we want to change it to uh, more dextrinous, you know, go for a a fuller final gravity. It'll bring us up to 1014 on the higher echelon of that. Um, let's change it again. Let's go medium. Okay, that's great. That's where I want it. 1011 is a great sort of range for a final gravity of a parallel without going too thin and too uh, dry. Okay, great. That gives us all the stats there. It's even got the grams of carbohydrates and the calories as well. Um, then we want to choose our fermentation profile. Right now it's set to the clean, so I'm going to leave that as is. But you do have the options to go on saisons, uh, lagers, that sort of stuff. You can add your own as well. Great, so that's the core recipe down. Um, you can go with that and brew with that. But you can also go with the water as well and really finesse the brew. So, I mean, beer is 95% water. You, it is worth paying attention to if you've got everything down pat. Um, but it is a little daunting and complicated. Uh, Brewfile, unfortunately, makes it pretty easy to wrap your head around it or... You don't even really have to wrap your head around it. You can just use this feature, follow the guidelines, and you'll get some good results without having to understand. Okay, so it gives you a summary of your grains and your volumes involved. You can choose your source of water. So I'm living in Scoresby, Melbourne, um, so I've inputted my local water. You can get your water report off Google or ask some of the local forums. Um, and then you want to choose your target profile. So you can select some of the notable ones. Um, like you've got your styles here, you've got your notable landmarks. Um, for instance, you've got English Ale, Hoppy, uh, Nipah one. I'm going to go with a Hoppy Ale, Hoppy Pale Ale. There's a Pale Ale one, perfect. So save that, it'll give you a suggested numbers of all your minerals. Great, so once we've entered that, um, you can also set it in the same way and just go in your style. So American IPA or American Parallel Select. Um, then you can hit Auto, and it will calculate how many of the specific minerals you need to add to achieve those parts per million to give you that ideal flavor. Um, more of the sulfites you may have will give you a higher bitterness. A very, it'll, you'll perceive it as very dry. But if you go more to the chloride range, uh, you'll get more of a smoother, maltier, richer sort of flavor. So great, we've entered that. Um, you can also do a few sparge order as well if you're sparging. And you can also calculate here how much acid to add to your mash to get the desired um, 5.2 to 5.4 range you really want to get into to get maximum conversion. So once we've done that, hit Save Adjustments to Recipe. And that will save our water additions to the miscellaneous tab. Um, here also you can add your stuff like adjuncts. Say if you want to add some yeast nutrient, um, you can add some there. I like to go about five, minute, uh, 5 grams per standard batch, and you boil it for about 15 minutes, put some in there, great. You can also do things like whirl flock in there as well. Uh, you can put in a hashtag for it to keep it organized. Um, let's go simple parallel, hit enter, done. Great, so that's how to make a recipe. All right, what if you wanted to go through and actually brew this? You could either print out it on the top here, um, and it'll download as a PDF, which you can then go and print, or you can hit this brew tab, say if you're using it on your phone, uh, that brings it into planning. So this is where you've decided you're actually going to go through this and, and put it into your pot and get it going. So you've got your planning tab here, which is basically your purchase list of what you're going to need to be adding um, to your shopping cart and purchasing from your local homebrew supply store, such as Kegland. Um, it gives you a little tick box, anything you may have you in your inventory already that you've added up here on the top left, which is where you'll be able to keep stock of what you do have on hand. Once you've gone through that, you go into the brewing aspect of it. So here is where it gives you a great little handy brewing timer. 
Um, so once you've got your status of brewing, it gives you these handy reminders. So there you go. It's telling you to start heating your waters to 67 degrees. It automatically calculates that strike temperature based on how much grain you have so that by the time you add your grain in, you're at the perfect temperature. It does all these handy little calculations for you. It also gives you when to add your little mineral additions that we calculated before with the grain. Um, your temperatures and all that sort of stuff. And as you're going through this process, it'll just give you nice little reminders. Um, so you can go onto the boil, uh, when to add your hops and your yeast nutrients and well flock, for instance. And along the way, if you take any measurements, say with a hydrometer or a pH stick, uh, anything like that, you're able to just punch them in there. And just basically it'll give you all your stats on the fly. So whether you've, you're, you're going to get below or above your IBUs, all that sort of stuff. Really handy stuff. It also gives you a running outline and overview of your recipe and all its formulation so far. Um, then once you've done that, say you've had an excellent brew day, you've made the best simple pale ale in the world, uh, then you put it into your fermenter, right? So you change the status to fermenting. Click yes. Excellent. Now the beauty of Brewfather, as we've mentioned, is you can integrate it with all your software, such as Wrapped, um, out there. So up here you've got your device tab where you're able to punch in the details, um, enter those specifics of that uh, little controller you've got, and it'll keep all the handy details such as when your um, hydrometer, what your electronic wrapped hydrometer is reading at the time, how your fridge is controlling the temperature, all these things. It basically integrates with that and, and they communicate with one another so that you're able to see on your phone anywhere in the world how that's going. Uh, you can just enter it there, easy enough, attach, Done. And if you did, my, current, my device is currently off, but if you did have any readings there, that's where they'd show up. Um, again, you've got more fields where you can enter in some details. Once you've done that, you've, come, you've uh, fermented it, you can then put it into your keg and, and note it off as completed. You've had a successful brew. Um, it's been aging in a keg a couple of weeks. You've had your first pint and, you, and you're trying it. Um, this gives you a handy little spot to put in those notes that you've come up with. So if you've got any improvements, anything you note, any weird flavors, any great flavors, anything you do different next time, this is where you'd be able to put it in. So this recipe was awesome, of course, because I'm a great brewer. Um, that's where you put in that sort of details. Um, any other things you came to, say, if you, if you got a little lower in the final gravity than you anticipated, um, it's easy enough to just put that in CQ so 1.09 um, and tells you how much your attenuation is in real time and uh, what the real time ABV is as well. Alright guys, well thanks for watching. That's how you basically make a recipe from start to finish. Um, have a play around there. F feel free to ask any questions you've got and explore also the handy features on the left there where you're able to configure your devices, mess around with your inventory, um, have a look at your library, your profiles, um, all that sort of stuff. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.